So you have been training consistently and are following a structured training plan, but maybe six months or a year pass by and you notice a little actual muscle development. How is this possible and how can you prevent not making muscle growth progress? So in this video, I will cover three common muscle growth mistakes that I come across in my practice as a personal trainer, so you can use your time productively and actually make good muscle growth progress. But first of all, let's set some expectations in terms of muscle growth. I often joke about how on the internet we see unrealistic expectations regarding muscle growth, but it's worth emphasizing since this can really impact the way you approach your goals. Many of the fitness transformations that you will see online are the exceptional cases. For most people, muscle growth is a slow and steady process, especially if you have some training experience. How quickly you can gain muscle will depend on variables like your training experience, but also genetics. For instance, we know from research that variables like your joint size and body frame impact your muscle growth potential. Those with wider joints will build muscle more quickly because their anatomy is able to simply support more muscle mass. In terms of training experience, we know that the more experienced you become in your workouts, the slower muscle growth will be because you get closer to your genetic muscular potential. A model by nutrition researcher Alan Aragon gives suggestions on how quickly we can expect to gain muscle based on different training experience levels. So it's good to tailor your muscle growth expectations based on personal variables like your training experience, for instance. With that said, in a period of six months and most definitely a year, you should be able to see measurable muscle growth progress, especially as a beginner or intermediate trainee. So let's look into some common mistakes that might hold you back in terms of realizing your muscle growth potential. The first and most common mistake is about not training close enough to failure. Training to failure essentially refers to giving it your all in a single set. So on something like an overhead press, training to failure means you do as many reps as you possibly can do without leaving anything in the tank. Now, training to failure all the time is not necessary, as indicated by the research. From a performance point of view, you could even argue that it's better to keep one to two repetitions in the tank at the end of every set, since you'll be more recovered for your upcoming sets and upcoming training sessions while still getting a good hypertrophic response. But still, even though training to failure is not necessary, we shouldn't train too far from muscle failure either. The closer a repetition is to muscle failure, the more effective that repetition is for stimulating your muscles. As you get closer to muscular fatigue, the more muscle fibers you will recruit and the more effectively you challenge your muscles for muscle growth. In the research, we see that sometimes beginner trainees leave seven or more repetitions in reserve at the end of a set. This is simply too far from failure to actually stimulate muscle growth effectively. That's why taking a close look at your working sets is key. Are you really just leaving one to two repetitions in reserve or could you be doing many more repetitions if you really push yourself? And the only way you can find this out is by periodically pushing yourself to muscle failure. Something I like to do once per month is performing an AMRAP on all my major compact movements to test my strength. This means that I take a challenging weight that I usually lift for 6 to 8 repetitions and I do a set in which I try to get as many reps as I possibly can. This AMRAP shows me where my actual strength is at and also informs my future weight selection decisions because now I know what true muscle failure means for me. The next common mistake is related to exercise technique. The only way we can get the benefits of an exercise is if we do it properly. This is why you see me posting a lot of content on Instagram and here on YouTube about proper exercise technique. This mistake ties into what we discussed earlier about pushing yourself in training. While we do want to push ourselves, we also want to make sure that we still have good control over the exercises that we do. We want to challenge ourselves in the exercises while being strict about the way the exercise is performed. This also requires you to sometimes check your own ego. If you're used to lifting heavier weights, but then you find out your form could be better, it can be tough mentally to reduce the weight. And I understand this. I'm a person that also likes to push my own boundaries when it comes to training, but sometimes it's good to reduce the weight so you can work on your foundational form and in that way you get better long-term progress. Ask yourself, why are you training today? Is it to show off your current training performance or do you train for future improvements? If you are in the gym to become a better version of yourself, then we do not have to care about how much weight you lift just to impress other people or to impress yourself even. What matters is you are using the right weights with the right exercises to properly work on elevating your fitness game. The third and final mistake I would like to discuss is in regards to nutrition, and that is restricting yourself too much while muscle growth is the goal. Building muscle is an anabolic process. So when your body builds muscle, it is creating new tissue and in order to do this successfully, it needs energy. While it's great to have fat loss goals and being in a calorie deficit to get leaner, we eventually want to get out of this calorie deficit if muscle growth is the goal. 
because the fact of the matter is that we can't optimize muscle growth while restricting calories. This is also why in previous videos I've suggested to spend more time in a lean bulking phase than in a calorie deficit if building muscle is your objective. Ideally, for every month in the year that you spend in a calorie deficit, you have two months of lean bulking so that for the majority of the year, you are building your body up instead of breaking it down. Now, I do understand that this may not be possible for everyone, especially if someone is currently overweight or obese. I also have clients in which we have about 80 to 100 pounds of fat to lose, and in this case, we can't lean bulk for the majority of the year. We first need a good fat loss phase of maybe up to a year to get rid of that overweight state, and then we can focus on doing more lean bulk phases to focus more on muscle growth. Also, related to nutrition, another trend I'm seeing in my environment is that people start restricting their carbs intake even when they are in a lean bulk for muscle growth. I would not recommend this since multiple recent studies about ketogenic diets while lifting weights found that keto or low carb diets are less effective for gaining muscle than high carb diets. These findings may have to do with the fact that high carb diets involve greater insulin stimulation and this plays an important role in muscle growth. But also, carbohydrates help us fuel performance in the gym, so going full keto or low carb when muscle growth is the goal may not be optimal. If you want to experiment with a low carb approach, then that's of course possible, but I would suggest you do this while trying to lose fat because the appetite suppressing effects of a low carb diet may help with creating a calorie deficit. And that was all for today's video. I hope you now have some good insights on what muscle growth mistakes you want to avoid for better long term progress. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also, if you found this video helpful, then leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and I will see you in the next video.